My first question I got from Zikule Mina, and uh, she asked us about geomorphology. And if you look at the questions, 2.2, it's just short answer questions. The question states, give one term for each of the following descriptions by choosing a term from the list below. Now, before I even look at the concepts that has been given to us, they've mentioned water table, confluence, river mouth, drainage basins, river source, interfluve, surface runoff, and groundwater. Okay. Mina, what they basically mean over here, what we're discussing over here, we're discussing drainage basins. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, before I'm going to answer these questions by the matching the concepts with the description, let me just explain to you, because it's vitally important that you need to know your concepts. Keep this in mind. If you don't know your concepts, you might not know what's being asked in the question. Now, all the concepts have been given to us, but let's quickly have a look at it, and I'm going to explain it to you. So if you look at the drainage basin, I'm going to give you a synoptic view of a drainage basin overview. Okay, a river starts from its source. This is where the river originates. And where it flows into the ocean is known as the mouth. Okay. Other rivers joining the main river is known as tributaries. Okay, now first of all, what separates, now a main river, for instance, let's say this source of the river, let's call it the, the Tugela River. Okay. Now this is the Tugela drainage basin, because it starts from the source and ends in the mouth. The other rivers joining the main river is known as tributaries. Okay. Now. Very importantly, lots of tributaries join the river. How more tributaries there is, we can say the higher the density. So if you see more rivers, we know it's going to be a high density. Now, for instance, I just want to show you a high density is a river with lots of tributaries joining the main river, a low density. only a few tributaries joining the main river. Now, what separates one drainage basin from another is the high laying area around this drainage basin. Okay, it's a high laying area and this high laying area is known as a water shed. So in theory, let's say for instance this is drainage basin A and drainage basin B, there's a high laying area between them, and that's the watershed. Okay. So this is the concept that you need to understand. Now, there's a high laying area separating tributaries from one another. And that is known as an interfluve. Now, vitally important, where two rivers join, for instance, that area over there, or that area over there, where two rivers or two tributaries meet is known as confluence. So mainly, I've just explained the different concepts that's been given to us. Now, I just want to explain to you the following, the river source and groundwater and the water table. Okay. Now, Rivers flow mainly in two ways. Okay, they've mentioned it. The first one is surface runoff. Okay, and we have groundwater. Now, this is quite a popular question in the examination because this is how rivers flow, okay? Now, as it mentioned, surface runoff, okay? When it rains, precipitation takes place, the water runs on top of the surface, okay? You can actually see the water. 
For instance, it's going to be perennial rivers. Okay, it's going to be permanent rivers. We can actually see the water. The water is on top of the surface. Now, groundwater means when the water infiltrates. Okay, it rains, but the water infiltrates below the surface. Okay, we all know the hydrological cycle, the water cycle. Okay, it's a closed cycle. Eventually, all the water will lead back to the ocean. We got evaporation taking place, condensation takes place, we've got rainfall taking place, and this whole cycle repeats itself. But the water moves to the ocean in two ways. On top of the surface, that's known as surface runoff, and groundwater, when it infiltrates into the soil. But keep in mind, there's quite numerous factors that plays a role that determine if the river is going to be surface runoff or the river is going to be more groundwater runoff. Now, coming back to these two diagrams, the high density and the low density. A river with high density, I'm just going to make a little error over there. I'm just going to write it there. The high density river, I'm going to draw this again, and low density. Now, when we look at the high density, what did we say? It's a river with many tributaries. Okay, you can actually see lots of water. So what did we say? There's a lot of surface runoff. Then we have low density, only a few tributaries in this drainage basin. There's a couple of reasons why rivers are high density and some rivers are low density. And these factors is the following. And that determine, these factors determine if it's going to be surface runoff or if it's going to be groundwater runoff. Now, first of all, the fact is, the first one is the rainfall. Okay. The area that experienced lots of rainfall, right, high precipitation, is going to promote surface runoff. Okay. If there's going to be less runoff, uh, rainfall, it's going to be a low density. So rainfall is one of the factors. Very important. Second factor is relief, and that's the gradient. Now, for instance, if it's going to be a steep gradient and it rains, because of the steepness of the gradient, the water is not going to have time to infiltrate. So what's it going to promote? Surface runoff. And when it doesn't have time to infiltrate, is it going to be a high density or low density? It's going to be a high density. I want you to remember the following. When we think of surface runoff, you can actually visibly see the water. Okay. So the water is going to be on top of the surface. So if the gradient is extremely steep, there's going to be no time for the water to infiltrate. It's going to promote surface runoff. Okay. But... If we got a gentle gradient, a flat area, I'm going to give you an example. For instance, think of your rugby field at school. If it rains, like a couple of weeks ago in Johannesburg, lots of rain over a short period of time, what happens with the water? We don't see pools of water on the rugby field. Because the gradient is flat in the rugby field, what happens? The water infiltrates. So it promotes groundwater runoff. Okay, very important. Now, another thing is, that I can also use a rugby field as an example, is vegetation cover. Okay, and that's my next factor. Now, if an area is covered with a lot of vegetation, what's it going to do? What does vegetation do? It absorbs. Okay, so when an area is covered with vegetation, what happens? It's going to promote groundwater runoff. The water is rather going to infiltrate. Now, once again, I'm using the rugby field as an example, covered with grass, and think, think of your assembly quad, covered with cement. Okay. What happens if it rains? If it rains on the assembly quad, it's covered with cement, what's going to happen? The water is going to be on top because it can't infiltrate. It's impermeable to cement. That's my next fact, but I'll get to it now. Okay, so what happens over here? An assembly quad, because of the cement, right, the water can't infiltrate. But vegetation promotes infiltration. So, what can we say? If an area is sparsely vegetated, 
is going to promote surface runoff. Okay. When an area is, there's a lot of vegetation, it's going to promote groundwater runoff. Now, the next one is the permeability of the soil and rock. Okay, what does this permeability mean? Permeability means allows water through or not. Okay, so for instance, if we look at the high density area, what can we say? The rock, underlying rock in this river basin, the rock is impermeable. Okay, what does impermeable mean? It doesn't allow water to infiltrate. So what's it going to promote? It's going to promote surface runoff. So the water is going to stay on top of the surface. Okay, when a rock is permeable, for instance at the low density, so what happens now? The rock is permeable, it allows water to infiltrate, like sedimentary rock. Okay, so what's going to happen? It's going to promote groundwater runoff. Same principle goes for different types of soil. Now, for instance, in riverbeds, what's the type of soil that we experience over there? It's usually like clay. Okay, now if you think of clay, right, what, what does clay do, right? First of all, it absorbs the water. But the clay gets saturated. It's almost like a sponge when you wash the dishes, right? If the sponge is dry, what does it do? It absorbs the water. But eventually, the sponge gets saturated. So it just overflows. Same with clay. So for the first time being, it absorbs the water. But then it doesn't allow any water in anymore. So what happens? It creates surface runoff. But think of sand now, for example. Right? You pour a glass of water over a bucket of sand. It's permeable. It allows the water to infiltrate. So what is it going to do? It's going to promote groundwater runoff. So the water is rather going to infiltrate into the soil. So these factors play a role, massive role regarding drainage densities. Okay, and the size of drainage basins. That's the reason we have big drainage basins. We see a lot of tributaries, lots of water, and we have smaller drainage basins, fewer tributaries, why? Because of these factors that influence the infiltration of water. Okay, so uh, the Kool-Aid, basically, this is the concepts that I've explained to you over here. But let's just quickly have a look at the questions that you've asked. Now, if we look at the question 2.2.1, right? The point where rivers enter the sea. And I've shown you in this di diagram, the river originates from the source, and where it flows into the ocean is known as the mouth. So, the river mouth. So let's just, we can wipe that off and just write there, the river mouth. Okay. Now, if you look at our second question, water that has infiltrated in the soil, I've just explained it to detail with you, it's the difference between surface runoff and ground water. Okay, ground water originates from water that infiltrates through the soil. So we can eliminate the ground water over there and write it over there. Ground water. Okay, this is by far the easiest concept. An area drained by a main river and its tributaries that is a drainage basin. If we quickly have a look at question 2.2.4, like I've explained earlier, the point, no, sorry, point where a river originates. There you go. Just below is the answer. We can eliminate that. It's the river source, or just the source of the river. 
if we have a look at this, 2.2.5, the upper level of the saturated zone. Saturate means when the water, basically, the soil can't absorb any more water, right? That's below the surface. Now, what do we do? Lots of times we drill for extra water, and where do we drill into? Into the water table. Okay, so we can eliminate the water table over there. If we have a look at question 2.2.6, water flowing over land after it has rained. Okay, I've explained that to you, the difference between surface runoff and groundwater runoff. So the correct answer over there is surface runoff. And we can erode that one, erase that one. Okay. And then our last question, 2.2.7, the point where a tributary means the main river, I've indicated it here on our diagram, on my sketch, these areas over here, and we know it's known as confluence. Okay.